feel sort of like Wayne Newton. <laughs> um, okay, so, well, who wants to talk about Summer of Code stuff? I think maybe everybody does to some degree because I think libgit 2 people were a little disappointed that, that they didn't get to have a student uh, that was in, in, in <laughs> that's very sad. But in past years, we've just kind of combined them. So, um, so I'll sort of start with what happened with Summer of Code this year, which is basically, um, you know, we were, I think Thomas started us off in maybe Feb February or January saying, hey, do we want to um, do we want to do it? You know, we need to come up with ideas. And the ideas page kind of filled up with mostly with projects that were ones that never got picked in previous years and a couple new projects. Um, and then uh, I kind of came about a week, a week before our uh, application was due and said, hey, you know, these projects suck. <laughs> uh, and, and I don't mean they're bad projects. I actually think they're things that would be cool to get done. But I think they're projects that, A, they didn't get picked in previous years. Um, and there are some new projects, too. But um, so I think there's a good chance that they're not going to get picked again this year. Um, but B, I think the scoping is, is wrong, that we have problems of saying, this is something that I'm, I'm someone who works on Git, and I know a lot about Git, and this is something I would find really cool if we could figure out. This is a long-standing problem uh, with Git. You know, something like dealing with large blobs, um, uh, you know, uh, Git log-l uh, work that Thomas worked on, these sorts of things. These are awesome projects, and we get excited about them, and they're the things we want to put on the ideas page because they're awesome. But it also means they're horrible projects for somebody who's just jumping into the code base to start on. They're, I mean, yeah, it's one thing to say, oh, well, these people can, um, you know, they have uh, three months of summer of code to work on this. That's a long time. That's, you know, I just contributed in my spare time. You know, that's a lot more time than I have. But you have to bear in mind, too, that they're a lot less experienced both with Git and they're also a lot less experienced in general because they're usually a lot younger and college students and things like that. So I think one of the problems we've had, and I think we have had a lot of successful GSOC projects, um, and I do think we, wanna, we want to be a part of the project, uh, a part of the program again, because I do think it's good. But one of the, the problems we've had is that we have these really cool big ideas, like um, a great example is the uh, rev caching work done by uh, Nick Adelin in 2009 or 2010, I can't remember now. And it was, it was a really great ambitious project to say, let's, uh, let's cache uh, incremental traversals of, of the revision graph in a way that we can uh, that we can reuse work, uh, you know, for things like upload pack or pack objects and things like that. But it was such a big project that at the end, he basically the the GSOC length of time was enough for him to come forward and say, okay, well, I've got a thing that kind of works, but nobody really understood it very well. It wasn't integrated into the code base very well. We weren't even sure if it was the right approach or not, um, and so. And then, of course, at the end of the uh, at the end of the summer, he went back to school and and was very busy. And I don't think I don't blame him for not working on it more. Like it was a it was a huge project, and he had lots of other things going on. But in the end, it didn't actually help the Git project at all because it never got merged. Right. So, I think. I'd much rather have smaller projects that are more about, that are less about doing something amazing for Git, something that we're like, oh man, how come we haven't done this in the last five years? Well, it's because it's hard. And doing a project that is more about getting the student to integrate it into the community, having them work on a smaller project that is less glamorous, but will actually get done, will actually follows the approach that we take with our own patch series where you actually, uh, you know, it, my average patch series, like if it's going on for more than a month, it's, it usually means I need to be breaking it up into smaller pieces. Uh, you know, that, that nobody's gonna review your 100 patch series because it's just, that's awful. Um, so, my feeling was we shouldn't do Summer of Code if we're not going to, uh, if we're not going to come up with projects that are moving in that direction. And then uh, I think there was a lot of dawdling and a little bit of discussion on the list. And then the deadline passed, and we said, oh, well, it's probably better to take a year off anyway. Um, so that's what happened with, with Summer of Code. What's going to happen next year? I think we should do it. And I think we should obviously follow the, the direction that, uh, that I just outlined. But I also 
I don't want to make a decision like that unilaterally. So what do what do other people think? Uh, you know, do we do we agree that's a good direction to go? Uh, so so to me to me the two issues are project selection or project proposals. That, uh, having a better scope and also uh, integrating students into our community a little bit more. Now I think LibGit2 has actually done a lot better job with that uh, because um, uh, you've had projects, I know Carlos, you were a student, Vicent was actually a LibGit2 student uh, originally, and Shu, you were a student this past year. Um, and I think that's worked a little bit better, I don't know, um, maybe you choose better, better scoping, maybe you just are better at getting the people integrated, but um, uh, so anyway, so, so those are the directions I think we want to go. So I'd like to hear discussion from people on, is that a good direction for us to go? It, would that solve some of the issues we've had? And I think Thomas is maybe going to give us some, uh, some numbers. Uh, and, but then also, if we're going to do smaller projects, what kinds of smaller projects? We need, that was the thing I think that was the blocker this year was nobody said, OK, well, here's, we need smaller projects. OK, well, here's a list of five smaller projects. That part, that part didn't happen. And I think it would have happened. I think we just kind of didn't start talking about it until too close to the deadline to do those things. So I can just keep talking while they get ready. Do you have ideas for smaller projects? To be honest, no. <laughs> um, Although, uh, I, I mean, I, there are a few. Uh, so one of the things we have, and I think one of the things that makes me think that's the direction we need to go, is uh, Matthew Moy, who uh, is a professor of something at some place in France. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but he's, he's a frequent contributor. And he has his, uh, it's, it's Ensimag, is the, is the university. And, uh, and uh, he has his students, I guess he runs a summer program where they take a class from him and he get, puts them in maybe groups of four and has the group of four work on a, a project that is, honestly, the scope of it is, is not very big at all. You know, they end up being these, these things that you're like, oh, I could probably do that myself in about a week. And he has a group of four students do it in about three weeks, which is seems crazy, but is about the right time for somebody. Because they're not, it's not the project that's the hard part. It's figuring out how open source works and figuring out how, how the code works and getting integrated into the, into the community and all those things. So I think we've had a lot of really good success with that because, because he's, he's figured out how to, how to do this scoping. Because he gets on his students to, he's like, I, I, I don't know how he does it. Maybe he like promises to withhold a, a good grade from them if they don't participate in the Git mailing list or something. But presumably, that, that's what he does. And, and they end up actually becoming a better, uh, better integrated with the community. And some of them, I think most of them don't stay. But, uh, but I think they've learned a lot more about how to do that interaction. And their code gets merged. So it's kind of everyone's happy. So who do you uh, he does. I mean, he basically he basically runs his own summer of code himself. <laughs> um, Do you know if he does intensive mentoring of the students? I have seen him do mentoring of them on the list. Like he's kind of like CC me on all the all the patches, and and he helps with the review and makes sure that that is being pushed along. Um, I don't know what kind of mentoring he's doing uh, uh, off list. I assume there's some. That could be, yeah. Well, the groups are, but I don't know if Matthew is working with them right. or not. Each yeah. And they, yeah, and they certainly have each other. And that's something that, that GSOC actually discourages. You're not supposed to work with someone else. I, I, sh I shouldn't say discourage, because it's not like they, they want you to become part of the community, but what they don't want is four students sharing a slot kind of thing, because it just creates too many, too many headaches. Are you ready? Um, Okay. Video is not working. I just wanted to add that uh, Matthew's projects are, I think, in the hot phase, only three weeks, right? Yeah, I think From that's... Implied on the list. So yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's some preparation, but three weeks is far smaller than the average GSOC over, what, 10 or something? It is, it is. No, and I, I think they need to be... Well, but, but you're also talking about several students working on one three-week project versus one student working on it. I mean, because as we all know, manpower is shiftable <laughs> between time and people. <laughs> but I actually think that the idea of a three-week project, though, is it's interesting. I, I just think about um, in past jobs that I've had where we've brought in interns, it actually is incredibly helpful for an intern to start out with something that is a one- to two-week project. Right. And they ship. Right? Yeah. That, um, and it's a 
that have to come in, you let it in the process. Right. Yeah. right. I mean, to the extent that we could, and I don't know what's possible under the terms of Google Summer of Code, but to the extent that we could say that this is a, a two phase project. Oh, yeah, we can totally do that. Yeah. There are, you're going to have this initial set of things that you're going to do where we might judge it as literally like a weekend's worth of work. Um, yeah. But to give them to make sure that there's a shippable. Yeah, and I, I think that's the key part. Yeah, is is that there be a be a shippable phase because I think that's what we run into is there's not the first important milestone is like one week before the end of the program, and then we don't they never ship anything kind of thing, and so. Right. No, it should be something we consider trivial because then it's easier to mentor them on the community issues and the integration issues. Yeah. So, yeah, some, some. So that's what I did when, when I did the, um, I did my student. I considered successful in, in, in the way that stuff got merged into Master during mm -hmm. that time. And, and most of the work we started uh, ended up in the repo. And it was not successful because it wasn't around anymore. So right. that part didn't work out. Well, that's not always going to work out. I mean, I don't I think, think that. Trivial, uh, the trivial part should be the first patch you submit before you get accepted so that people can provide Right. So yeah, I know that a lot of uh, other uh, summer of code uh, organizations do that. Basically, they they won't even take a student until they've that gone through that shipping thing. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to uh, break it into smaller parts. So <coughs> my student got the task to, to move the .git directory out of the setup. Right. It was one task. The other was to, uh, to improve push that it became suddenly aware. So we had this little task less, which were yeah, like one good. week or so, or a few weeks. Um, and he could push one patch series to the list and start working on the other thing. Right. So there was no dead, dead time. Which you have when you're working on, on just one series. Yeah. Um, so while he was waiting for commands, he put work on the other stuff. And it was surprising that I um, really think I could have done the same thing in much less time than I spent on mentoring him, but I think that's the point of this. Right. So, so yeah, yeah, I think, I think, I think that's, that's a mistake that we certainly made early, early on was to think, oh, it's, it's kind of like free coding, coding work. And it's, it's not. not. It actually takes. takes it, it takes more time to mentor someone to do the project than for you to do it yourself. <laughs> but but hopefully we, you're... We should yeah. talk frankly for each possible mentor, this is going to be easier to do it yourself. Right. You, you have to do it for different reasons. Right, right exactly. exactly. And um, I think that worked out really well that... You know, students are different. Sometimes you get a really bright one and just screws out the Sometimes you get models. Carlos. Yeah. <laughs> but then you can, can, you can even extend the scope of the, yeah. of the user project. And sometimes yeah. you get students who are not that, that fast, and then you can even say, okay, not you know, that, and but you have to do this, otherwise I'm going to fail. Right. Um, and that's what I think went really well. So that's what I would propose, not one topic, but um, I have the impression that we could use an IMI merge project. Maybe we could do some other merge drivers. So maybe one GSOC project could be write merge drivers. This, this, and that, if you have a file. Right. Um, <coughs> then it's one piece or one area of Git you just have to be uh, have to get used to in the, in the limited time. And um, you can put in other merge drivers if, if it's really fast, or you can, you can say, okay, that's not that. So, yeah, I, I would agree with all that. And I think a lot of it comes down to the simple idea of work, get them to work how we work because there's a disconnect. Like, we don't go away from the list and come back three months later with a giant, with something. We have lots of little projects going on, and that's something that we, that we have. And so, so it may not even be change the scope of the projects. It may be break them down better. And so. maybe use topics which are on the border of Git and not on the core. Yeah, <laughs> I also think that is a problem, yeah. Still some kind of topic at the border, so they are easier to, to tackle than 
And actually, I think related to that, it's too part bad. of why the Pit 2 has been more successful, perhaps, is that everything is still on the border. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, I made some statistics. I had this slide also, but I think lunch will do for that. Um, I did this yesterday on the train, so about four hours in total, I think. So it might be very wrong, but I just wanted to dispel this impression. At least I got from the thread that everyone has the impression that we suck at, at the Google Summer of Code. As far as I can see, this is absolutely not true. So it's very hard to come by other projects or other organizations in GSOC terminology statistics, especially if you're on a train and, and 3G internet, if at all. Um, ourselves, I mean, you can, you can dispute these assessments. This is what I could figure out in the time given. And I should also say that Ram Kumar, who's unfortunately not here, also contributed some corrections to this. Um, we have slightly over half you see it at the bottom. It's not the same 12, but slightly, slightly over half of the projects that I estimate were mer merged in some form. So for some of them, it might not be the whole thing, but they seem to be merged in a sense that I found some commits that sounded vaguely like the project proposal in the time frame given, which was as far as I could dig. And we also seem to have 12 contributors who contributed significantly after the end of the GSOC. So you can see in some cases that I counted like uh, where was that guy? There was someone, for example, in September who had some commits, so that's outside of the strict GSOC time frame. What are the dates on the right column? The very last commit that is in any of the repositories. So I don't know. I mean, it's, in German, we call this uh, suffering on a very high level. Seems to me, anyway. I mean, I'm all up for fixing it, but now that I made this list, I don't see the problem. Well, so we're like 50 50, right? For merged, from just looking at your 12 out of 23? Well, uh, do we have any Googlers here who can say what the retention rate on Google internships is? Uh, I have no idea what the retention rate is. Uh, I think some projects do better, some do worse. I think we're actually not that bad in terms of retaining contributors. But in terms of retaining interns, you wouldn't retain 50%. Oh, oh you mean uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. normal Google internship? Yeah, so oh, I know. You're nowhere near 50%. <laughs> That's what I hoped for, right? So we can compare against that. Because it's a, for my, my mindset is basically they are paying internships, right? It's basically a summer of paid work, so it's an internship. I did also try to run some statistics. So this is the time scale is normalized to start on May 1st of the relevant year. Um, the dots are color-coded so that the green ones were merged and the black ones were so-so and the red ones were failed. And my conclusion is that there's no conclusion. <laughs> Except that people, I mean, you can apparently draw the conclusion that, that uh, only projects that were merged had some contribution beforehand. But this, this doesn't hold in reverse, so yeah. I did the same on mail, though I should say that is even less precise. Because for one thing, I didn't have an, an EGIT list copy offline. For another, it's harder to match on the actual usernames because people have various addresses and stuff. But it's similarly no conclusion. So that's for statistics. Uh, should I? I mean, most of it has been rehashed. I, I made a summary of the thread. So OK, we, have, we saw this. So these were the theories in the first thread. I think some of them we could probably write down, right? So one, one I particularly agree with is, is that we should stay far away from political projects. So in, it's your coinage, but th these are projects where the, the important part is convincing other people that this change is not breaking others' workflows and not actually the writing code. To your point, diminishing returns. My impression from your first slide was that things are getting better in recent years than they were. I, so I think this is my point. Yes. And, and what I meant was that as Git matures, there's less of this frontier, this border, and everything becomes a little more core and a little more ossified. But it's hard to it's hard to change things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, I, I'm glad this is listed under the theory page because, like, shit I write in an email, like, in the middle of the night is not necessarily well thought out. <laughs> but this was really meant to be a summary slide, so I didn't really try to value the, the theories. I, I have more summaries. 
So these were the ideas in that thread. So I think some of them we've already heard. Um, the last one might be interesting. So there's, there's been this idea that we should start again of sorts and do this in a small, on a small scale. I think that depends on the mentors we have available. Sure. Probably also give it all to Lipkit. To always have a co-mentor, a co-mentor with you together, and I can co-mentor with me, which is really good because staying responsive over three months of time is pretty hard when you have a life. So if you want to take some day off or sick, you have someone to kick in who has the time for that. So I really strongly advise you get a mentor and a co-mentor. Um, so that maybe sets the upper limit on the projects that when we have like three co-mentors which volunteer and two mentors, that makes two projects. Yeah, but I think during the last years we have had more mentors than, uh, than we took students. So this was not a, a limitation by the number of mentors we that is true, yeah, we always have more mentors. I, I volunteer to mentor every year and no one ever chooses any of my projects, which I think I'm, oh, we want back on the theories page on, uh, I think the top one is me. <laughs> but, um, uh, so yeah, no, I, I do think we have a lot of mentors, but often the area overlap is not as good. Like, I wouldn't really want to mentor somebody on submodules because I try and ignore them as much as possible. Um, but that's an area where we actually have two, two good mentors. Um, but uh, I would just worry with a co-mentor situation, it's nice to have a backup, but that backup's only useful if they're keeping, if they're almost as good as the, the first mentor, if that makes sense. No, that's not true. No? Because I was not that proficient with the area that Bo Young attacked when I was co-mentoring Thomas. Okay. But when he left for holiday, we talked about what is to be done and what areas. And I uh, had some people like you at the mail of that question. So um, the basic thing is that we uh, are responding to the student and giving him the next uh, push into the right direction, uh, looking after him, that he pushes it, the patches out. And you can do that even without being that proficient in, in the area the right. project okay. is about. No, that makes but sense. But you have to uh, have the skills in knowing what, what the mail is about and how the community works. But that's one of the important things to teach. And right. every one of us can do that. Okay. So, um, so you I would argue that we should basically always have a co-mentor, even if the person is not in the area. I, I think he has to be um, willing to do that. And I'm not saying like you say, some of not my stuff and don't do it. But, right. Um, I think you can even co-mentor for stuff you're not very proficient in, but um, know something about. So I, I didn't know, know much, and I still don't know much about the Git log infrastructure. But uh, I was seeing the patches flying by, and uh, I was reading all the discussions those guys had. So who was going on? What parts of the code were uh, in question? And I always had people I could ask if I didn't okay. know the answer myself. So then I would have sort of said to him, "Okay, just let me check. I'll ask someone else, and come back with the answer needed." So um, that's something I think almost every one of us can do. But when I work with interns, I actually tends to work better if I don't know the area very well, but I do know how the process works well because then I learn with the intern the area. Uh, you hear their perspective a lot better. Yeah, yeah. You don't just go, oh, it's this, and you don't take all the shortcuts. But you, do, but you can guide them on the, this is where you go to find, this is where I go to learn. It's right. also a good way to get people to engage with the community if they're not getting the sort of technical expertise that they need from their mentor, and their mentor says, don't bother me, go to the list, here's the person to CC. That's actually a much better way to mentor, I think. So our problem is our mentors don't suck it up. <laughs> you could be our new prototype. Yeah, I'll take care of that. So, um, I, don't know, I would also suggest that we actually go for several co-mentors and for trying to split the image of the mentor a bit. Because, I mean, what you're discussing now, right, is this, this guidance mentor. But what we also need is a review mentor. And, and I think this will have to be a group. And this group will have to be big enough so that we can basically guarantee to get the review, even if it's a fairly large patch in some useful time frame, maybe 48 hours. Because we don't have the luxury of being PEF and having 15 open series and saying, OK, I will go work on something else instead. But this is the student's job, right? The student wants to get this review and work on it again. And this is probably one of the areas where I qualify as an example for a mentor suck. Michael filled in last year, right? Mm -hmm. To some large extent. 
maybe this will also be easier or harder, I don't know, to, to motivate people to sign up for one job but not the other. I, I have a question about the project scope because uh, on the one hand, you, a small project, um, certainly it's much, do, much more doable. And if they get it done and they have extra time, I'm sure if they're interested, they'll just work out something in the nearby. There's never a shortage of, of work to do, especially once you've dug into some, some topic. On the other hand, uh, I'm curious, is it hard to get students on projects that don't sound sexy, that sound like they're just some? Yes. I think, I think there is, actually, because we have sometimes less glamorous projects uh, on the list, and they're the ones that don't get picked year after year. And like the students <coughs> tend to cluster, uh, so I've, I've, so like I said, I've never actually mentored because no one picks my projects, but, uh, but I have participated in the proposal review uh, every year since 2008, I guess. And students cluster a lot on, uh, you'll get, we'll get like 100 applications and there'll be, you know, most of those, 90 of those are on, you know, two or sometimes three projects. And then the other ones are usually just, there's usually 10 that are just awful that you don't even want to like. Do they cluster on the undoable uh, huge scope project? <coughs> yeah, I would say so. Because they're the most interesting sounding yeah. ones, right? So maybe we should put laser in all the uninteresting projects. <laughs> 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 Well, I mean, there's always a question, right? You want some, you want to find someone who will be a match for the project and the community, mm -hmm. right? Particularly, so I mean, actually, I'm curious, like, for the folks here who were Google Summer of Code students, I mean, obviously, you have a very particular personalities such that you are a good match long term for kind of becoming an active long term participant. Were there particular things that you were looking for at, you know, when you were trying to figure out what project was a good fit for you? Like obviously you were willing to do things that were not just you weren't just looking for lasers. Uh, so I don't know. I mean how, frankly I'm interested in finding other people like the students that we've had who are not just drawn to something flashy, like, but also are, you know, are, are drawn to sort of every aspect of things because becoming a long-term participant means that you don't spend all your time doing the glamorous things. Right, so the most extreme form of that would be to say we should stop having project proposals and we should just have people proposals and then we should tell them what to do. Um, Is that even viable? I mean, as far as Google's concerned, we run it how we want. Um, you know, I mean, we, we take in proposals, but I think, yeah, I mean, I, it's almost more important to choose a person who's going to be a good fit for the community than it is to choose a project that we want to get done or, you know, or, or that we think that person might be a good fit for. Because a person who's a good fit for a project but doesn't integrate well into the community is going to fail in one way or another, you know. Um, but I think one thing we've tried to do that's maybe a sort of failed experiment is uh, the project proposals uh, on the IDs page usually have some gaps in them. And this is a way of uh, picking students that have that kind of planning ability and have that kind of uh, big picture understanding that they can fill it in in a realistic way. And you know, we like they could do this really ambitious thing, and that they don't choose this really ambitious thing that's unfeasible is like a really good sign. Um, of course, that has uh, side effects that are not great. Yeah, no, I, I, I've been a, either guilty or can be credited with that experiment many times because uh, I try and do things like, like I'll put a project proposal that's like, we should make large blob support better, and the solutions could look like A, B, or C, or some combination of them. And I keep waiting for the student who's like, man, I totally understand this problem, and like, <laughs> we should, like, this is what we should do. And I'm like, yes, like, I didn't think of that. That's never going to happen. That's so <laughs> stupid. Um, and so, yeah, I do, I do think we have been very, uh, we, have, we have followed that kind of procedure, and I think it's not, it's, it's not the right direction to go. Yeah, so I think the problem is that we should have criteria saying uh, what we are going to do and how we are going to judge each project mm -hmm. and each people, each student, and also criteria for how, for if we are going to do uh, a GSOC and how many 
students who are going to, to have, for example, uh, we, and who is going to decide how many students with uh, using which criteria and so on. Uh, that's, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you know, but that's pretty much a given, right? Google gives us an upper bound that we can still decide to not take some slots. But the... In fact, we gave away one last year, I think. Yeah, but we, we can't really pick the number. We can always say we're overworked, but we, we can't really pick the upper bound. How many we want? Yeah, I think the written was the year before we got the extra slot or two, right? Yeah, it's... Yeah, I mean, so Google comes... Uh, after we've had the proposals for a while, uh, and we started ranking them. We're supposed to come up with a number that says, "Here's how many we'd like to have in you know in our wildest dreams we would we would have." And and then there are M that's like we totally have to have. Like it would be ridiculous if we don't get them. And that's sort of the lower bound. So it's so it's, it's basically a way of giving Google an upper and lower bound uh, for our, our what we want. And then they come up with some number usually between there. And unless our lower bound is really unrealistic, but I mean, usually our lower bound is like two. And they've always given us at least two. So, and so I, I guess we did five over here, I think. We just had numbers up. I, I think yeah, there were five in one year. What was that? Yeah. 2011. Yeah. Yeah. 2018, more six. Oh, yeah. Big year. Um, I think 2008 actually was easier to get slots because the program was still starting a little bit. And we had participated in 2007. <laughs> and went through Yeah, and went through yeah. um, So, I don't know, I, I would also like to discuss on the, on the topic of mentor sucking, this scope creep issue. So, okay, I won't switch again. I snuck it up on the, on the theory summary because it wasn't actually in the thread. There's this tendency of any Git topic to devolve into a discussion of how to properly solve this if Git were actually a maintainable code base. <laughs> For example, I mean, this wasn't GSOC, but it was the spin-off from GSOC. Log-L got held up the last time it was held up on the grounds that, in theory, it should be possible to somehow wire it into the GIF and log pipeline, if you could call those pipelines. Um, and I think this is a danger where we actually, as the, as the org, have to first figure out if we think the project is feasible in, in any way, right? And this, I think, it doesn't only happen to the GSOC projects. It, it happens a lot. <laughs> You're one of the few people who can anticipate what the refactoring thingy will be and integrate it in the front of the series. The worst thing that I saw which can happen is that he starts working at it and uh, okay, it doesn't maybe finish in time, but then this, this topic is blocked. Mm -hmm. This is because we had no good idea, I mean, how to deal with, uh, okay, we are thinking he's not working on it, but okay, mail, he's not responding or so. And this is for me also a problem giving, uh, giving those projects to, to, for example, areas which are important to, to us, for me, because I have the fear if this fails, if the student stops working on it, then I have a lot of work getting this uh, getting this topic back to, to normal so, because it's somehow occupied. Some uh, I mean, right, right. Yeah. This problem because I of some legal reasons, things couldn't get uh, get uh, integrated. We needed some okay from from the company so that he could contribute, but this was not done in time, and so we had. To Really stuck on this topic for for months, and it took a lot of time for the for the uh, mentor. So I don't think that's been a problem for GSOC, just because by at the end of summer, if things aren't merged, we're kind of happy to write off the student yeah. games. Yeah. Or, I mean, we're not like, oh, well, don't work on that because there's a GSOC student whose unmerged work is still sitting out there. I mean, we encourage people to like want to look at their work and see if it's good, and that's what Thomas did. I mean, that was two years after Bo's work that you basically cleaned it up and submitted it. Which, I mean, uh, ideally it doesn't take that long, but I think that was that was great. It was valuable work, and somebody could have come and worked on it in the meantime. But it turned out the best way to do it was to pick up his work where it was, you know. And, yeah. And, 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 now, it's a lot of time. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah it's after they have worked. And I'm not sure it's such a big problem. I mean, also you said that the problem of unresponsive students, I mean, I mentored two of the projects in the last three years that didn't really get somewhere, like Bo Young and Thomas Kummer, and I can assure you that unresponsiveness wasn't a problem. So Bo went to real life and got a job at, I think, McKinsey or something, immediately after the G-Talk, basically, so he disappeared. Thomas is still sticking around, but in any case, during the G-Talk, they definitely weren't unresponsive. We have had unresponsive students. The guy in 2009 who failed, um, I was sort of, I don't think I was co-mentor officially, but I was sort of pseudo-co-mentor for him. And he became unresponsive, and, and actually he was pretty upfront about it. He was like, oh, yeah, sorry. And then we just failed, and he was cool with that, whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean, those things do happen, and I think it's just part of the part of the process. It sounds like the situation you were in, there was, it was good work, but there were legal things, yeah, right. which, we don't usually run into as part of GSOC. Um, I mean, that would suck. But. No, I mean, maybe this guy was working for a company and he wasn't allowed right. by company rules to participate unless the, uh, the lawyers in this company said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so I think GSOC is easier than that for that because there's a lot of signs, uh, forms to sign up front. So if they, okay, okay. Yeah, and I mean, you have, they to, can't have, another you have to be enrolled in university, and right, it's, yeah. it's always labeled as a full time job across summer, so it's, right. uh, you wouldn't like have another job. As I said earlier, we're, we're pretty good at being sort of uh, impolite and disregarding the value yeah. of the, the sweat and tears that went into some work by either abandoning it or uh, just re implementing and sort of ignoring it. Yeah. Um, even in the context, like, even during a summer project, for example. Uh, we, uh, well, so I, I only have one example of this, uh, is that um, when uh, Ramkumar Ramachandra uh, was doing the, uh, the Subversion Remote Helper, uh, this worked out really well, in that someone else did, uh, David Barr did some work uh, completely independently, like right before the summer of code, that could, like very much overlapped with, with what he was doing, and he made that work. Like he helped out with that. He like did some path review and upstreaming with that, and did other things during the uh, summer. Uh, and it worked very well. Um, so I, I think that can be made into a non-problem. Uh, for this uh, thing of uh, students being non-responsive, I've also run into that uh, in like even good students. They sort of test the boundaries, mm -hmm. and I, I think as a mentor, uh, I. I would have liked to have a little more support from the organization in terms of these are the guidelines that all of our students have to follow in order to be allowed to continue that kind of thing. Um, and I know doing formal things isn't fun, but it, it might be something that we should do. I, I think I, I'm not opposed to having more guidelines or even rules. Um, uh, I think, and again, I think that's a lot of what happened this year was just we came to the realization of a lot of these things too close to the deadline to actually like come up with those rules in time and that's and that's why we're we're not in it this year. So so I'd like to I'd love to have this conversation over this summer on the mailing list and hammer out those rules. Before the summer. Or maybe before yeah. summer it's almost summer now. But, yeah. <laughs> Oh, um, yeah, this summer before. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for next year, so that we're not scrambling in, in January and February to try and have this discussion again. So, so some of these guidelines are, like, the summer of code projects that said, like, you have to, like, every week or every couple of weeks, you should send an email saying, oh, what have you been up to? And yeah, I think that's, like, happen. way too infrequent, actually. I want to, I think, if, if you're doing Git development as your full-time job, over the yeah. summer, which and is what not, number of code students should be, then you should be on the mailing list almost every day. Yeah, and you should. And I actually think that we should be getting people to review patches, even though I don't trust the review from a GSOC student. But like, many eyes can spot lots of problems, and and I think as long as they're being mentored in their reviews, and they're not the only reviewer. Then I think that's a good thing to be doing. They they should be talking and out all these other side issues and stuff. You like need GSOC eyes to see something's not clear, or right. like if they don't, like, I don't understand this, or like right. this being little that variable just has a stupid name or something. Sending these frequent emails, like what we did with the commentary was that he first sent the patches to us and we reviewed and take out the obvious stuff, <laughs> which is like 
white space and right. <laughs> whatever. I feel like that should happen on lists, though. And, yeah. and other yeah. people can, can share that. I'm more than happy to tell people their white space is damaged. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> volunteer part. Right. Yeah. But no, but, but yeah, I, I understand the point in saying, yeah, sometimes these these patches need a lot of work to even hit it to like list quality. But you know, people who aren't GSOC students also show up and have those problems. Yeah, and we did it for two reasons. Uh, one was um, that maybe the students were anxious to put stuff on the list. At least I was the first time we did it. Yeah. So um, we had an opportunity to send it to us. We look over it so we don't make a fool of yourself in public. Um, and I think that that, that is helped well for. And with the time, you, you see uh, the, the amount of, of uh, review you do before you send this stuff out, the grades, and I think at the end of the summer you send the patches first. I think so. Yeah, I so think that's a process, fine, yeah. and, and I think it, um, it helps. And it helps to get the noise of the list, because sometimes you will just begin with mistakes, and yeah, you do mention them. So I think it's, it's part of your responsibility that you don't flood the list with, with I, I think things you can. Flooding the list is good. I think yeah, it I think sort of helps people who are not the mentor to. Uh, Feel that there is a project happening and yeah. to sort of help out when they can. And you think it's like the first couple of so like the first series, like to you say, okay, pretend you're sending this to the list, listen to me, yeah. and then you can point out like the obvious uh, things. Maybe we can end it sooner. So yeah. I think the first the first series should go to the mentor. When I yeah, I understand this. And, and students are nervous nervous like that. I said the first uh, series to your mentor, to uh, both of them are, are uh, like it, and yeah. um, then the next. Patch series goes out of existence. Yeah. So you can maybe use that as a rule of thumb. That's fine. Of course, none of this applies to Libya, too. What do you guys do for, uh, like, for your GSOC students? Do you, are, are you, I mean, you guys are doing everything through pull requests on GitHub? Yeah. yeah. Um, and you just. And we have them in chat as well. So yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. yeah. We have, we have a long more real time and. The group is small and mostly on, and That's mostly true. in chat all the time. We have people in chat and pull requests, so it's cool. and that well, part. And there's lots of low hanging fruit too. Yeah, and there's that, right. And there's right. We have tons of small things to get started. Right. With. And, and oh. another <coughs> with like the YouTube to being successful. That well, there is this standard to to problem against. Like oh well, we should behave like Git does in these situations. Like a lot of the right. things have already worked out by this Git existing. Right. Um, since, we, right. Since so much of our work is just catch up, then there's it's not we're far less likely to propose a research problem and far more likely to propose a the goal you're shooting for is extremely well defined by Git already. <laughs> so, well, I wouldn't say extremely well defined, but <laughs> well, at least there's a reference in the list. There's something does. to us to right. either it does all right, either it does what Git does with all the warts and wrinkles, or it doesn't. Okay. Yeah. If it either is compatible with Git or Although that's actually an interesting thing that we haven't talked about. I mean, the Google Summer of Code students on Libya 2 so far have worked primarily on Libya 2 itself. But we actually have a bunch of binding folks here. And it's one way if we wanted to expand the projects out of C <coughs> into other languages, um, plenty of the bindings could use lots of help and might be an opportunity for someone who was not a expert, but who wanted to participate in Git to make some really significant contributions in, in binding land. Uh, I know certainly the Ruby bindings could use a lot of help. Uh, what do you mean in terms of things like iterators? Or? Um, yeah, anything. In ways of, of bridging the Libya 2 functionality into something that will feel natural in the local language. Right? You can't get somebody, somebody who has no yeah. C knowledge, but somebody whose passions maybe are in in a language, right? I think I'm sure that the the Python folks wouldn't mind some. <laughs> well, a lot of bindings are written in C, yeah. so no, no. Right, yeah, again, it, it can't it, be it, not C, but yeah, but but, but it, it is sort of a bridge in between. If it's someone who doesn't feel as comfortable, there's sort of plenty of so work where the, 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 the language then with yeah. The, the creative work is on the side of the, of the scripting language, right? That's what you would hope, right? Is that the creative work is understanding what feels natural in yeah. that language and what is going to be something that that community is comfortable with, which, like, you know, I, I can't tell you what Rubyists want in their binding, but someone can, hopefully. Dude, I'm going to put a, new, a native curl binding on the... Oh, that, that is top side. priority. <laughs> 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 Uh, what do you do with the parrot? 
We have Binding. Uh, no, we have Binding. And we need someone to look after the Amiga board. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I think you, you sort of implicitly pointed out an important point, right? In this whole discussion, if we if we make up a formal requirement, and then libg2 has some other workflow where this formal requirement doesn't make sense, it will get very hard to enforce the formal requirement. For example, I would be all in favor of saying something like, if you fail to report an update in two weeks across the entire summer, the org admin as the chief asshole will fail your project despite what the mentor might, might say about it. And I think it'll be fine. I think you just have to leave room to say what form that feedback takes for the core projects. projects. Yeah, it should be on the mailing list. Um, but uh, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't work for but just it's a different project. Although I need to send like every month or so, I send like a, and, uh, I need an update email. Yeah. Yeah. So the other thing is, <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, I mean, more, uh, more often it doesn't make sense. <laughs> so, so out of all those projects, most of those are core Git projects, but we've got, what, four Libya 2 projects, and there was the one eGit project in 2008. I thought there was another JGit project, but maybe, didn't Sean mentor something last year? I don't know. I think there are more the Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. I think, I think that all happens under the Go, go, go back to the disclaimer also. I mean, yeah. I mean the, apart from the very first Libgit 2 thingy, which was hard to find information on, it seems that they were all stellar, right? So statistically speaking, we should give the slots to libgit2. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, so I'm happy to keep libgit2 under the umbrella of, of Git Core. I've been, I've been happy with that. I mean, we, we usually give one slot, and, and it's been usually a good project. And obviously, libgit2 does you know, I catch up, and I, I like that the communities are, are talking. But it would also be fine for libgit2 to apply separately to Summer of Code. Um, and I, th I think there's even a form on the application that's like, is there some project that like can vouch for you kind of thing? Mm -hmm. And if you just, if libgit2 wants to apply next year and say, yeah, like it can vouch for us, then they probably ask me like, you know, why is libgit2 being separate? And we can explain to them. And I, and I think they probably would give you a slot. We you consider it this year, but it didn't work out. Yeah. So. Um, <coughs> Well, uh, yeah, that, so may, anyway. that may be approached just because it would simplify we could, right, the parameters of what acceptable contribution Right, exactly. It lets you have an org admin who handles everything. I, I mean, it's, I've been the org admin, and you don't actually do very much. Uh, or maybe that's part of the problem that we have. <laughs> but, but, you know, but it's mostly about reviewing proposals and then making sure every, that everybody's good. Uh, the mentors know what they need to do. The students know what they need to do. If anybody has problems, they can come to you with administrative type things. And, but but I, when there's libgit2 stuff, I just don't pay attention to it, and I just assume the libgit2 mentors are, are doing fine or whatever. So it would really be the same thing. It would just be more formalized under, under Google's way of looking at it. So, I mean, just out of curiosity, what do, what do we get from the summer of code? Oh, it's like a drain on the... <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I mean it's, other it's than money, like what... what oh, uh, I mean, it, it, I mean, would we be uh, so? The question is, would we be better off like running our own, right? Uh, I see, it, you know, internship program that is year-round type thing. And oh yeah, I mean, we could do that, and we can we can have more. Control it's over it. it's basically we get the money. It's a well-known program, so it's it's advertised very well, and people know it, come and find it. Um, and yeah, but I guess I mean, in the mentor summit, like but, that that almost seems like that's almost the downside, where it's like. Uh, you know, students are like, I want to make some money this summer or something, or my, my you know, professors told me that I should probably go do this, and they just like will go through all of the, the things rather than being specifically interested in Git for some reason. Yeah, we got a lot of applications that are clearly uh, like that. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's another thing that might be, or even like a useful feeder if we did like something through the, the software or the soft conservancy. Yeah. Um, well, also this uh, in previous years of the summer of code, there was uh, students could apply to a maximum of twenty organizations, and this year it was five. Yeah. Uh, which I think really helped. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen because we didn't because we're not in it this year, so I don't know. So what that's a good change. I would be slightly careful about the lawyer stuff. I mean, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not an American, but from all the regulations and all the FAQs in GSOC that relates to to legal issues, check those out first. Before you just say I'll, I'll run a program like this. I mean, it might be feasible if you, well, if you decide recruiting on just... Well, recruiting worldwide, right? Yeah. Recruiting only in the U.S. or somewhere where you know the That's what I wanted to say. If you stick to U.S. people, maybe that works. Yeah, but I, I mean, we definitely would, would want to recruit from Europe, at least, because...
because actually I was thinking that the opposite, which was not the opposite, but I was thinking it would be interesting to be able to have that program open to people in the southern hemisphere because it's not it's not when they're off school. Oh, that's and, true. Yeah, and so there's basically half the world that can't participate in Google Summer focus not during the time that they're not at school. Um, but I mean, but like for what types of liability? My gut feeling is that it's a huge amount of paperwork. That's yeah, the, but it's really only if you look at the, the, the paperwork yeah, for the yeah, because yeah, there's, there's compensation involved. Yeah. 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 So you, you yeah, technically, technically you're employing paper from like that, across the world. So we have a lawyer. I think it would be awesome though. <laughs> Winter's coming. Reasons, I there's no other thing. So yeah, I, I think, so yes, and I can point you at it, um, <laughs> but uh, it needs probably a more official spot, and I think that mm -hmm. related to that is we probably need a more official wiki, um, or it doesn't have to be a wiki per yeah. se, but um, but the, the kernel.org ones, I, I don't know, I don't go to it, maybe it's really well maintained, but it seems like it's not super well maintained. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but maybe that, that might not be just right. A couple of days ago, wasn't there uh, an email uh, on the list about spam on the... I don't know. I, I don't remember. It seems to be a recurring topic. It, it yeah. is, yeah. yeah. I think DJ was doing that and then stopping that. So, so yeah, so that's the yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I think the wiki thing could be a topic <coughs> we should discuss just for itself. Yeah, let the, uh, we'll uh, but, put it on uh, for, for talking yeah. about. Are we, are we actually ready for lunch soon? Yeah, it's 20 past. Okay. I don't know, I mean, where, where, where do people want to go since we have these amazing four ideas here? <laughs> no, no, I mean, not, not, not the talking, to the continue, continuing this, this GSOC topic. So it should... I think we do want to participate next year. I think a lot of this, somebody needs to take the lead on writing up like a set of guidelines and recommendations, and we need to work collaboratively on the on the um, uh, project page. Yeah. Oh no. So if you care enough to raise the idea, okay, that's yeah. me. Good. That's a, yeah, I'm looking at you. I mean, I'm just the organ man. I don't know anything. <laughs> No, no, and fine. by the way, if anyone else wants to be the organ man next year, <laughs> the position is open and offered on every year, but no one's yet taken me up on it. No, I'm fine. I mean, I can summarize and, and hush out something, and then you can flame me. That's good. 